Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. There's lots of K's in there. And we've been on talking about righteousness. I'll give you a moment to get there, as I know you read there a lot. It's right after Nahum. You probably read there a lot too. Hallelujah. We've been talking about righteousness, and in righteousness, it's who we are, right? Amen. That's what we've established over the weeks that He became sin. Christ was made sin so we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Because of Jesus, I am righteous. Come on, because of Jesus, I'm accepted. Because of Jesus, everything has been available to me in the kingdom of God. Because of Jesus, I was made righteous. I am righteous. I'm not trying to get righteous. I am righteous. I don't have to earn to be in his presence. I'm made to be in his presence because I am made righteous. It's who you are. It's not what you're trying to be. It's who you are. It's what you originally created to be. And everything that we deal with in our flesh is to try to take us away from what we were meant to be. And a lot of times people, the world or the enemy totally deceives people because, because they think how they are in the flesh is what they're really like. No, that's what the enemy has deceived you into thinking who you are. Yeah, but you were made and created to be righteous. You were made and created to be in his presence. You were made to, for, for, to be his workmanship. That's right. That's you were made to be a vessel of honor unto him. You were made to be crowned with glory. You were, you were made for so much more than anything that you, you deal with in the flesh and anything that you do in this world. You were made righteous. Yeah. And now it's taken us, now it's not only getting a revelation of that righteousness, but having that become such a part of your life where it totally leads you away from everything that you've dealt with in your life. See, he wants to lead you into green pastures, not old pastures. He, he, he doesn't want you to, to, to go back to old things. He wants you to, to, to embrace the new things. But we as a body, as believers, as Christians, we need to totally be so dissatisfied with what the natural can produce in our life. Yeah, that's good. Come on. Because there's something that God desires to do in our lives. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God. The gospel was preached so we could become and be made righteous. Amen. Say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. It's who I am. Say it again, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. It's, who I am. it's who I am. Hallelujah. Let's look at Habakkuk here. And um, it'll be a little different message on righteousness, but I'm, I'm, my desire is just to be obedient. So let's do this. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 4. <clears throat> it says, Therefore the law is slackened, and justice and righteous sentence never go forth. For the hostility of the wicked surrounds the righteous. Therefore, justice goes forth perverted. Okay, what, what is this, this saying here? Habakkuk is a prophet, and <clears throat> you got to realize Habakkuk, man, this, this was an intense man. And, and, and you know, he, he, he's, really, he's really, if I could use the word, ticked off. And he's really ticked off at God. I mean, he is upset. He, he is mad because, because he's tired of seeing the wicked prosper. He's tired of seeing how, how the wicked go on and do anything they want, but yet nothing seems to change for them, and they still progress, and, and, they st and, and God's people still go into bondage. So here Habakkuk is really aggravated, and that's his, really his comment. He says, well, I guess the law slackened. I guess, God, you, you don't, I, I guess you're not who you say you are anymore. I guess, I guess all of a sudden you change your mind about the law. And then he goes on and, it says, and then he says about, because why? Because the hostility of the wicked is what's surrounding the righteous. So here Habakkuk is saying, look, we're being surrounded. We're being taken captive. And, and you know what? And you're not doing anything about it. But God, yet God says this in verse, verse 5. It says, look around you, Habakkuk. Replied the Lord among the nations and see. And be astonished and astounded. <clears throat> For I put into effect a work in your day, such that you would not believe it if it were told to you. See, we often, too often, judge our lives but what's currently surrounding us. 
We base every decision we make based on our emotions, our feelings, what we want, what we think we need. And everything we do is based on what is surrounding us. But God wanted Habakkuk to see something different. Look around you. Be astonished and astounded because I'm putting into effect a work in your day. Not in the future, but I'm putting into effect in a work in your day right now. Be astonished and astounded. See, God wants you to be astonished and he wants you to be astounded about what he can do in your life. He wants you to look back a year from now, five years now, and ten years from now and be like, wow. Look what God has done in my life. Look what the Lord has done. You see, but, it, but the thing is, is, is Habakkuk is still looking at the fact that he's righteous and he's constantly surrounded by unrighteous. God, how come you're not doing about this? But God wants him to get a new perspective. Look around. Be astonished and astounded. Why? I have put into effect a work, meaning I've started something and you can't see it yet. See... God didn't start something the day that, that, uh, that Habakkuk was declaring this. He really wanted Habakkuk to know is, yeah, you see yourself surrounded right now, but I've already put into effect a work in your day. I've already got something planned. I already have a better outcome. I already have something more than what you can see right now. So the title for today is, he wants to do a work in your day. Oh, that's good. <laughs> See, Habakkuk is the righteous. And you, me, we all, according to Jesus, we are righteous. And he wants to do a work in your life. Uh, hold on. Let, let, keep your place there for a moment. God is always about working. Look at, look at, you don't need to turn there, but. In John chapter 5, verse 17, and this is after the, the man that was at the pool of Bethesda and how he was, um, how he was healed, and they, they criticized him because of what day it was and all that. But verse 17, it says, But Jesus answered him, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Verse 17 says, But Jesus answered them, My father has worked even until now. Now listen, he has never ceased working. He's still working, and I too must be at divine work. God is always about working on the behalf of the righteous. He's at, say he's at work for me. Hallelujah. A work in your day. If you could see what he sees about your future. But too often we allow everything else to control us because we, we can't see. We can't see what he sees. And you'll never be able to see what he sees until you see yourself the way he sees you. You're righteous. Look around. Be astonished because I have started a work in your life. So Habakkuk goes on for several more verses. And in chapter 2, familiar verse, it says, actually verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. Now, this is, here, Habakkuk just went off on God. And here now Habakkuk is saying, all right, I'm going to stand upon my watch and I'm going to see what he's going to say to me because I know he's going to yell at me. That's really because I, 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 he, he was wanting to get God so mad that God would have to respond. But God wasn't mad. Because verse, verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall, not, it, it shall speak. And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. What did he want him to write down? Come on, that's right. Now, I know this is a principle in writing down your vision, but a lot of times people read that scripture but don't know why, what was he supposed to write down. The fact that God is surrounding me, that God is at work 
on my behalf. Meaning, it doesn't matter what the, what the righteous, it doesn't matter what the unrighteous are doing. What you need to do is you need to write this vision down for all of God's people that they can see and be astonished that I've started a work. That I've started a work. And it says, it says it will surely come. It will not tarry. Meaning, meaning it's going to happen. It's, Vic, it's going to happen. It not, it's not just might be. It not could be. No, it's going to happen. I started a work and what I start, I finish. That's what God was really wanting them to get a hold of here. And the next verse says, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But what the just shall live by faith. Now, let me read this in the Amplified. It says in verse four, it says, look at the proud. His soul is not straight or right within him. Now, look at the proud. Being proud is a result of living out of order. Because it says here, it says, look at the proud. His soul is not straight or right within him. Meaning, so, so you, we step into pride when we live out of order. When your soul is out of order. When your spirit's not, when your spirit's not leading and when your soul is leading everything. When your mind, your will, and emotions are being led by everything, that's when you step into pride. What is pride? Meaning, I have a better plan. I have a better idea. I've I've got better ideas for the rest of my life. I know what I want to do. That lets me know that your soul is out of order. Anytime you say, well, I want to do this, and I'm going to do that, and we're going to do this, then you're out of order. Because what did God say? Because the proud are not looking to God for plans. The proud are not looking to hear his voice. They just want God to confirm their voice. It's like, let me come up with a plan and I want God to bless it. Hmm. I won't be here next week, so it's... But here, look at, look at the proud. Their soul is not straight or upright within him. But what? The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If we're born again and we're righteous, how do we live? We live by faith. We don't live according to our own plans. You know why you're frustrated in life and wonder why that, that, that you keep getting disappointed and things keep happening the wrong way? Oftentimes, it's because, it's because we're trying to do our own thing. Right. Only a few amens on that one. I love you. I love you. Philly. I love you. I'm your pastor. I love you. But I want you to see this fact, the, the aspect. God has plans for you. He has a work that he's wanted to start in your life. But what he's trying to communicate to Habakkuk is, is, is don't be like the proud. You're going to have to live by faith. Yeah, right now you've got an enemy surrounding you. Right now you're starting and you can't see me working. But you know what? You are the righteous and you're going to have to live by faith. You're going to have to do it with an expectation and a confidence in me, knowing that I love you, I care for you, I got a plan for you. And if you just hold on tight, you'll be astonished and you'll be astounded. Because I'm always working on your behalf. I'm working on you. I'm working in you. I want to work through you. See, it's not just a cute scripture of the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. What is uh, uh, Hebrews 10, 10, 38 says, the just shall live by faith, but any man draw back. What, my soul will have no pleasure in him. What does that mean? It's because when you're not living by faith, you're living in pride. When we aren't living by faith, we're actually living in pride. And really what the gospel comes down to and what walking in the kingdom of God comes down to, hearing God's voice, everything comes down to how much of your life are you willing to surrender? How much of it? How much of it? Because the degree that you surrender your life is the degree that God can direct your steps. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on, on, all, lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge me. And I'll direct your steps. He can only direct you in the areas that you surrender him to. Surrender him to. 
And I'm not ta- this isn't putting you under a law. This is, this, isn't, this, is, this is putting you in a place where you understand that God wants to work in your life. It's not about trying to get righteous. You are righteous. But what we have to come to a place is, am I going to surrender my life to his plan? Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, you don't need to turn there. Paul is talking and he says, I didn't come to you with enticing man, enticing words of man's wisdom, but what? In demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. So that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Now, now think about that. He, he said, I didn't come to you just with how good I can communicate and how good I can speak. Because I didn't want your faith to be based in just eloquent teaching. But I wanted your faith to be built in what God could do for your life. See, God wants to work in your life. So, so the thing is, is, is we can't base our life on man, natural man-made wisdom. And for far too long, we base too much of our life on man-made wisdom. And Paul says, no, you have to, you can't let your faith rest in what the wisdom of man is, but what? In the power of God. The just shall live by faith. So if I'm going to live by faith, that means I can't put my trust in all of man's wisdom. But what? In the power of God. God wants to work in your life. He wants to work in your life. He wants to work in your life. He wants to work through your life. Be astonished and astounded because he has put into effect a work in your day such that you would not believe it were told to you. Meaning meaning you're going to step back at the end of it and you're going to be, wow, I never could have thought it, but I could believe it. I never could have thought it, but wow. Don't get your eyes, get, get your eyes off the natural things. Realize that God's working in you. God's working in you physically, emotionally, financially, in every area of your life. But we have to live by faith. We have to live by faith. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. See, when we live according to man's wisdom, we'll always have limitations. You know, thinking about that, I think of... um, Naaman, when he went to Elisha and he, the servant came out, Gehazi, and he, he, the, he said, well, go dip in the river seven times. And Elisha didn't even come out. He sent the servant. So that made Naaman mad. <laughs> and, and so he, he went on and said, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Well, at least it could be a clean river. Come on. No, it's that river. <laughs> dip seven times. What he was made whole because he couldn't base his faith in man-made wisdom because man-made wisdom doesn't say if I dip in a river seven times, I get healed. That's right. That's right. So God had put into effect to work in Naaman's day. Naaman couldn't see it. Why? He still had leprosy. But yet, but yet when he put faith in what the prophet had said, when he put faith, not in his man wis- main wisdom, but in the power of God, next thing you know, he put, him in a posi- put himself in a position to where I have no limitations. Because when you live by your natural limitations, you'll always be limited. In your natural faith, you'll always be limited. But when you put your faith in the power of God, now you live without limits. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yes. Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. So the just shall live by faith. Let's look at verse 6. But the righteous, righteousness, which is of faith, speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? So we're talking about the just shall live by faith. Then here it says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. And what does he say? Say not in your heart who shall ascend or who shall descend. Meaning, meaning our faith, righteousness which is of faith isn't looking for something else to be done. Righteousness which is of faith is realizing it is already done. Meaning I don't have to say for him to do that. He's already been there. 
He, I don't need to go down and get Christ. He already came up. Verse 8, but what does it say? The word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's a lot of directions I could go here talking about the words of your mouth and confession, but I want to deal with the principle of faith here because verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In John chapter 6, verse 47, it says, any man that hath the Son has eternal life. Or any man that believes in the Son has eternal life. See, faith has to be a, it can't be just an idea. Yeah. Faith comes down to what am I possessing in my life? Because here he says, if I believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. So when I believe, I now possess. The just shall live by Faith, meaning I live based on what I'm choosing to possess. I'm righteous because I believe Jesus made me righteous, so therefore I possess my righteousness. I believe that Jesus sent and gave me peace, so therefore I can possess my peace. Jesus came to bring a joy that this world can bring, so therefore by my faith I can possess joy. I know that God said in his word that I could come boldly to the throne of grace and I can be in his presence so by faith I can lay hold of that and possess that and make that mine. So faith is about understanding what you can come to, what you can possess. Possess means taking ownership of. What are you taking ownership of as it pertains to the word of God? Let's keep reading here. For, for, for the scripture says, verse 11, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He, he has put into effect at work in your day. So what I need you to do this morning and what the Holy Spirit wants you to do this morning is is the right, just to live by faith, you need to possess that. You need to lay hold of the fact that God's working in me. God's working on me. The just shall live by faith. That's what he told Habakkuk. The proud, his soul is not upright in him, but what the just shall live by faith. What do they need to live by faith for? The fact that God's got to work. God's doing a work in my life. God's doing a work in my life. Possess that. Take ownership of that. Abraham had to take ownership of the fact that he was now not Abram, but he was Abraham. He was no longer Abram, but now he's Abraham. He, he goes from like father to, to the father of many nations. He, he had to possess that. And it wasn't until we see in Romans chapter 4 where he was fully persuaded that what God had said, he was also able to perform. So whatever God had communicated, he was able to do it, meaning God had put into a work in Abraham's day, but Abraham had to take possession of the fact that God had called me to be a father in many nations. So this morning, you need to possess the fact that God wants to work in your life. He wants to work in your family, work in your children, work in you, work on you, work in your, your relationships, your friendships, work in your community. Work in your nation. You have to believe that. You have to take possession of that. Because the righteous live by faith. He's got to, he started a work in us. And I love this verse 12. And the Amplified says, No one, for there's no distinction between Jew or Greek. The same Lord is Lord over all of us. Now listen, and he generously bestows his riches upon all who call upon him. His riches. Yeah. His, you know what the definition of riches here? 
to be rich, to have abundance, to be richly supplied. And get this, to be affluent in resources so that he can give blessings to all. So when it says he's rich to all, it's saying he has enough resources to give blessing to all. See, and this is not just referring to salvation. You've got to realize this is, the, this, this is now talking about God's nature. That he generously bestows his riches upon all that call upon him. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I understood what that really meant, I'd do a whole lot more calling upon I'd be calling on the morning, calling in the noontime, calling in the evening. When I lay, if you realize that, that those that call upon his name, he ri richly blesses them with anything and everything that they need. He richly blesses them. Richly blesses them. See, but calling upon him is now responsibility on us. See, people like to make their, 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 their life totally based on, well, you know, and, and they get at this pity party. Well, well, God, well, God just mad at me. God doesn't do this for it. God doesn't do. Have you called upon his name? Are you doing your own thing? So, but it's calling upon him. See, the calling upon him, that is the possession that I'm possessing the one that can make me rich. I'm possessing the one that can bring me out. I'm possessing the one that can turn this around. I'm possessing the one that's working on me. I'm possessing the one that's working in me. The righteous live by faith. See, it has to go from just a message to this is how I live my life. And you're like, well, I haven't, I haven't seen the, 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 the symptoms turn around yet. It, that doesn't matter. I possessed my healing by faith. Yes. Now, yesterday, I, you know, I, Annette didn't know this yesterday, but yesterday I had a fever. I had a bunch of stuff going on. She knew I was a little congested and stuff. But you know what? I, I went out and cut grass and did things around the house. I'm like, you know what? I, it doesn't matter because, because it doesn't change the fact that God has put into effect a work in my day such that I believe it would told me a work's already been done in my life, but you know what? I'm going to have to possess this. Because why? The just shall live by faith. It doesn't say the just shall live by their feelings. The just shall live by their emotions. The just shall live by, by how they feel. The just shall live by what the doctor said. The just, no, it's the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. The Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Call upon him. Hallelujah. He wants to do a work in our life. He wants to do a work in your life. We have to possess it by faith. Believe it down to the center core of who you are that God is at work in you. That your, great, your greatest days are ahead of you and not behind you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Go to, go to Isaiah 42. If I live, if I base my faith in natural wisdom, I'll be limited. But when I base my faith in the power of God, I open myself up to experience or walk in with no limitations. I'm in the wrong chapter. 42 is the right one. I wasn't in the right one. See, God, God wants to work. I mean, even Jesus said, he, he still works. He never ceases working. And Jesus says, and I too work. You know, you know Jesus, he, he's still working. It says, well, he daily... He continues to make intercession for us. Yes. He is working still, Vic. <laughs> He's working still, Vic. Think yes. about it. Because he started a work. Yes, yes. Glory to God. When he told him back, he, I started a work. I put into effect a work in your day. Now Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and he is daily, consistently making intercession on behalf of us. That's right. One of Romans that says, "Why?" Well, really, it comes down to the fact he loves us so much. Come on, that's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm still in the wrong chapter. I'm right? 42. 
Verse 6. I, the Lord, have called you the Messiah for a righteous purpose. This is prophesying about the Messiah. I, the Lord, have called you for a righteous purpose. Or you could say, I have called you for a righteous work. Come on. Not that, but I've called you in righteousness. That's right. I will take you by the hand and will keep you. I will give you for a covenant to the people, for a light to the nations. Verse 7, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those who sit in darkness from the prison. I am the Lord, that is my name and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare to you. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Many, I've called you Jesus to begin a work. I called you to get people out of darkness, to get people out of prison. Why, I began, forget the former things. I'm starting a new work. And I want to declare that to you this morning. Whatever your former things were before this date, before this day, good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter. He wants to do a new work in your life. He wants to do a new work in your life. Paul said, I count none of these things. I, I, all these things, but I count none of the, my, my successes, my failures. I count it but trash, garbage, dumb. But is, what is the, but I press towards the mark. Right. Why? Because I know God's got a, God's working in my life. God's worked in my life. Hallelujah. And he's not finished with me yet. Hallelujah. Don't remember the former things. Behold, I do new things. Let's go to Isaiah 43. I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Verse 15, verse 16. Thus says the Lord who makes a way through the sea. In a path through the mighty waters. You see, he makes a way through the sea. Now, sometimes people would just like, God, I wish, just wish you would get rid of the sea. No, it says he makes a way through it. He makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters. Well, well, God, can't you calm the mighty waters? Well, there's a time for that. But also it says he makes a path through it. Verse 70, who brings forth chariots? Now it talks about the nature of God. Who brings forth chariot and a horse, army and mighty warrior? They lie down together. They cannot rise. They're extinguished. They're quenched like a lamp wick. Verse 18, do not remember the former things, neither consider the old. Consider the things old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, meaning I'm doing a new work and it's about to spring forth. It's springing forth right now. God's always working. Don't tell, don't tell me God's given up on you. Don't tell me that God's, God doesn't have another. But don't tell me that God can't turn this around for you. He can create a new thing. A new, he can create paths through your circumstance, whatever you're going through. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it and know it? And will you not give heed to it? Hmm. Do you not perceive it? So the first thing he's asking is, can you see it? Do you not perceive it? Do you not know it? Meaning that word know it is, are you intimately acquainted with it? See, the word know is a word for faith. You know, I, you, on, on Wednesday, I couldn't talk Rochelle out of that bottle of water. It's, it's a bottle of water. Ha, having confidence in that water. She, she knows that it's a bottle of water. Can you not perceive it? Do you not know it? And will you not give heed to it? See, that's sometimes where we, where our breakdown is, is do we give heed to it? Yeah. Meaning, do we make it a vital part of our life? Right. It says, I will even make a way in the wilderness, in rivers, in the desert. I will make a way in the wilderness. Meaning, where there's no pathway, I'll create one. Yeah. See, that's where without limitations comes, in, comes into play. When there isn't even a path there. You, you might realize, it's like, you know, it's like you, a cat has nine lives and, okay, Lord, I've given up all nine lives now. And you know what? All of a sudden he says, bam, there's number 10. Wow, we'll start all over at nine. You've got nine more to go. Because that's the nature of God. He says, I will even make, but all he's wanting you to do in this, can you see it? Can you believe it? And will you give heed to it? That's all he's asking. As long as you can see it, as long as you can perceive it, and as long as you can give heed to it, I can make something out of nothing. 
as long as you choose to believe me, as long as you can live by faith, I can do something out of nothing. And I will make rivers in the desert. Rivers, rivers aren't usually found in the desert. But yet he'll make them there. He wants to work in your life. He wants to work in every area of your life. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Got time for a few more scriptures. Go to, um, go to Psalms 5. Psalms 5. Thank you, Father. The just shall live by faith. Now, I want to look at a connection here with some scriptures about what is produced in the life of the just that lives by faith. Let's see some examples in scripture of when the righteous live by faith. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11. Amplified says, but let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Now, trust, that's faith, right? Mm -hmm. But let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. So, so if you're Habakkuk, Habakkuk and, and he hears that word of God started a work in you. And then he hears the just shall live by faith. Well, according to this, it says, let those that take refuge and put their trust, let them rejoice. Meaning if I believe that he started a work, what do I need to do? Rejoice. Oh, Father, I thank you that my enemy is surrounding me right now. But, Father, I thank you that they came and met me one way, but they can flee seven ways. You see, see that, that's faith. When you can rejoice in the midst of whatever you're going, that's faith being released. That's taking possession of faith. It says, let them ever sing and shout for joy because you make a covering over them and defend them. Let those who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits. For you, Lord, what will bless the righteous. You'll bless the righteous. See, it's talking about trust, but now he goes on and talk about, I will bless the righteous with favor and surround them about with a shield. I will surround about them with a shield. Hallelujah. You know, it's kind of like Proverbs 14, I believe it is, verse uh, 12, I think it might be. It says, how the wicked are overrun, but it says the righteous will flourish. But then you got to listen to the next verse. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of there is destruction. It goes back to that pride and belief. It's if I'm going to do my own thing, but we're the righteous. They're the ones that choose to receive God. It says they'll flourish. And this is a year to flourish. So he blesses the righteous with favor. Let's go to Psalms 34. Thank you, Father. Psalms 34, 17. When the righteous cry for help, what what did Romans 10 tell us? Those that call upon him. Richly, bless them, richly, small things. So when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their distresses and troubles. Not some of them, all. All of their distresses. The Lord is close to those of a broken heart and saves such as with a crush, with a sorrowful for sin and are humble and thoroughly penitent. Verse 19, many evils confront The consistently righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Verse 22, the Lord redeems the lives of his servants and none of those who take refuge and trust in him shall ever be condemned or held guilty. Wow. The just shall live by faith. Means what? When I'm living by faith, he delivers me from all my enemies. I'll never be condemned. Let's look at verse, uh, chapter 37 of Psalms. Verse 2. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall you dwell in a land and feed surely on his faithfulness. And truly you shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care your load on them. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. This is all trust. Verse 6. And he will make your uprightness and right standing with God go forth as the light. And your justice as the noonday. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him patiently. Lean yourself upon him and fret not yourself because of him who prospers in the way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Thank you, Father. For the evildoer, verse 9, shall be cut off. But those who wait, hope, and look for the Lord shall inherit the earth. When you're righteous here, show the righteous will spring forth like the light. When I'm trusting in him, my righteousness will spring forth. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He is at work in your life. Yes. Say, he's at work in my life. I want to close with two scriptures. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And Philippians chapter 1. Be astonished and astounded because he has put into effect a work in our day such that we would not believe that it were told to you. I want to hear some astounding stories. Amen. I, I, want to, I want to get some astounding testimonies. Yeah, yeah. When things start happening the rest of this year, I want you to send us testimonies of, of, of things happening because yeah. you're like, and every time you see it, you say, that was God. That was God. Right. That was God. That was God. That was God. Yep, he's working. He's still working. He's working. He's still working. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Able to do. Do, it, do is a work word. See, if you're not doing, you ain't working. If you, if, you have, if you have people that work under you and they, and they ain't doing, they ain't working. They ain't working, they ain't getting paid. You, you know, some people like, well, I went to work, what did you do? There's a difference between working and doing, but that's a whole other topic. But let me get back to Jesus here. Now unto him that is able to do. Able to do. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The just shall live by faith. There's a couple of things I need to possess in the scripture. One, that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask, think, dream, or imagine. The second thing I needed to possess is his powers working in me. According to his power work. See, a lot of times people want God just to show up and do the exceeding, but is he working in you? Because it says the exceeding is going to be according to his power working in me. See, it's not just him working. It's what are you doing? And our work is believing in obedience. Come <laughs> on. Now unto him that we like to shout it up. Now unto him that's exceedingly. Able to do exceedingly, exceedingly. He's able to do exceedingly whatever you've seen before. He's able to do beyond what you ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. He is beyond anything that you could ever hope for. He is whatever you need him to be. He is the great I am. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask, think, dream, or imagine according to the power that works within us. Let his power work in your life. Let his word work in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 1, I'll close with this. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 5. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amplified says, and I'm convinced 
and am sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. He that began a good work, he will complete it. Be astonished and astounded because he has put into effect a work in your day such that you would not believe it if it were told to you. <coughs> he that began a good work yeah. will complete it. Everyone stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, I thank you for the work that you have started in each one of us. I thank you for the work that you have begun in us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the completed work. Thank you for accomplishing in us your good will, your good pleasure. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust in you. Father, we trust in you, Father, that old things are passed away. And we trust in you that all things have become new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for your completed work, Father. Thank you for the completed work. Thank you for the completed work that you're doing in this church. Thank you for the completed work that you're doing in every single person in this congregation. Thank you for the completed work. Just start praising and praying. Just start, just start praying unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just pour out your heart to Him. Thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing in those watching by way of Internet. Hallelujah. That the work that you began in them, that you will complete. Thank you, Father, that your faithfulness will be displayed, the work. The work that you're doing in physical bodies right now across this auditorium. The work that you're doing in physical bodies watching by way of internet. Father, I thank you the work that you're doing. The work that you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I thank you for this being our fruitful season. I thank you that this is our fruitful season. Hallelujah. This is our fruitful season. Hallelujah. This is a fruitful season. Oh, Father, I thank you for, for, for wisdom. I thank you for, for promotions. I, I thank you for increase. I thank you for directing steps to the right jobs, right places. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you that you're at work. You're at work. Thank you, Father, that your work at work in our children. Oh, Father, I thank you that you're at work, at work in Bryn's life. You're at work in Andrea's life. You're at work in Ryan's life, in Joy, and Corey, in our children. Father, you're at work in their life. You're at work in our grandchildren. Hallelujah. Thank you that you're at work. Hallelujah. We possess the promises of God. We possess the promises of God. They are yes and amen. They are ours, Father. So we lay hold of the promises the promises that you've given us in your word, the promises that you've spoken to us in our hearts, the promises that you've given us concerning our children and in our children's children. We thank you for it and we lay hold of it. Hallelujah. We thank you that our greatest days are ahead of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you that you're going to complete the work for this church, Father. The work that this church is called to, it will be completed. Father, I thank you for the 2,000 people by 2023. We call them in from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The work that you started, you will complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for, for every church, Father, that we're connected with. Lord, I thank you that you're completing the work that you started in them. Hallelujah. 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 I declare discouragement needs to leave every heart in this place right now. Hallelujah. 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 Discouragement is a result of letting go of the promises of God. Hallelujah. So the only way to, to get rid of discouragement is to lay hold of the promises of God and what God's spoken to you. And don't be shaken from it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Oh, la masongon de la Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, if 
Father. Mm. Mm. It's for, just, mm. Repeat this after me. Father God, this morning, we come to you as a family. First off, I repent of pride. Coming up with my own plans. Doing my own things. I surrender my will to your will. I thank you for the work that you have begun. The work that you started in all of us. I thank you for that work. Do a work in me. Complete a work in me. And do amazing works through me. Because you are working on me. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm.